Hello my soccer universe, let's also recap what happened yesterday in the Europa Conference League. Um, it was a day of late equalizers, winners and, and, and so on uh, that I found quite uh, astonishing, especially for some big name teams like Fiorentina, Aston Villa, but also the team that I'm wearing, Pauk in a way, a little bit of bounce backs. We also had the first point for a Faroese team ever in a European competition. So that was also quite exciting. So I would say, let's talk briefly through it. You see here the first set of results with Victoria Pilsen actually getting a um, win at Astana in the very, very early kick off. But then we already had a standout result with Balkany from the Kosovo beating Dinamo Zagreb 2-0. What's wrong with Dinamo Zagreb, to be honest? I really don't quite under understand it. Uh, this was a team that was in the Champions League last season and had a shout probably even to stay in the Europa League. So yeah, losing 2-0 to Balkany is definitely not a great result. Klaxvik, 0-0 against Lille. Yes, not glory for Lille, but Klaxvik uh, played in the new stadium in uh, Thorsha, or in the big stadium in Thorsha. Uh, where they have now a big stand. I still like the glass screens on each side. Slovan, a deserved win uh, against Ljubljana. Uh, they actually should have uh, won by more because they missed a penalty. The winning goal came through a penalty. The other Nordic team, and there are three Nordic teams in there. Both of them lost, but Breda Blik uh, from Iceland losing 1-0 uh, at home to Zoria. Ka Gent uh, had actually a relatively easy win over Maccabi Tel Aviv, who are a little bit of a disappointment at the moment. Then. Probably the craziest game of the entire evening was the 2-3 loss of Bejikas at home at Lugano. Why crazy? By the 60th minute, Bejikas had a 2-0 lead, Abu Bakr uh, looked all settled. Then yes, there's a yellow red given. They seem to hold out for another 20 minutes. Lugano pulls one back out of nowhere. And then suddenly, very, very quickly, I think it was 86th and 80, 89th, they scored two goals to turn a game on its head. Lugano was not in that game at all. And in the last 10, 10 minutes, they completely turned around and get a famous win there. And then, of course, we had uh, Bode, the last Nordic team, losing a home to Club Rouge. Um, yeah, I think that they had a coming. Club Rouge actually bouncing once back after they uh, should have won against Besiktas, to be fair. Uh, the late slots had probably the more big name teams in there. We had Aston Villa against Rinsky Mostar. And I have to love him. Rinsky already beat uh, AZ last or a time around. 3 0 down at the half, 4 3. And now they almost got a point at Villa, losing only a stoppage time uh, due to a McGinn header. Uh, yes, Saniolo also had a chance. See, for me, Aston Villa and San Saniolo still doesn't quite compute, but hey, so be it. Um, Aston Villa get the point. And Srinsky Moscow, why, why am I so? Because uh, Lusk just barely beat them. They're doing quite well. I said, get the bounce back at home, 1-0 over Legia Vassar. Uh, then we had Genk uh, getting a 2-0 win at Chucha uh, They have a, actually quite a nice stadium there in Belgrade. Uh, it's the third stadium. I have to, I'm quite impressed. Um, Fiorentina were 2-0 down right after the half to Ferenc Varos at home. Ferenc Varos hit the post. They could have made it 3-0. Then ba Antonin Barak pulls one back with a header, but it took a stoppage time equalizer through Ikone to make it a 2-2. Two, two. So Fiorentina also kind of still having to arrive in the con competition after being in the final of the previous one. Aberdeen and uh, H, uh, HJK from Helsinki, uh, player the 1-1. One, one. Uh, then probably the surprise result of the evening, Pauk winning 2-1 over Frankfurt. Pauk had an early uh, goal chalked off. Then they score one to, through Zivkovic. They just walks through the entire defense. However, Frankfurt then had more of the game, created more chances. They got an equalizer of a defensive error from Pauk. Uh, and probably were then pressing too much and then very late on uh, concede a winner for Pauk. And so Pauk sitting very pretty in that group with six points, whereas the uh, Frankfurt three and the other one two each. Uh, Ludo Goretz had a big win uh, in the first round. Now they have a huge loss. Going 1-0 down, 1-1 one, one in the opening 10-10 minutes, and then Nordjelan just rolled over or them, scoring seven in, in, in the process in total. Uh, my favorite was, in a way, the last one, because it honestly would have gone down as an own goal, but the Nordjelan player decided to tap it in to make it a, a, <laughs> to make it a proper goal. And then Fenerbahce winning 2-1 at Spartak Trnava in Slovakia. So, 
with all that we have now the following stands, standings we have the uh, slow one is now the top of the of, of the group ahead of lil klaxvik has a single point but it's those top two that they will go through uh gent ahead of zoria then makavite tel aviv honestly um think this will be i don't really believe in makavite tel aviv at, at the moment pilsen and balkany uh ahead of dinamo zagreb did not really expect this one i mean i as i said uh, zagreb is for me a little bit of a, oh, of a surprise uh the group uh, with besiktas now besiktas stole a point now they lose one i still think they could make it out of this group but at the moment it's lugano and club Bruges that look uh, pretty in that one then uh villa the villa at that group everyone on three points i think in the end it should be az and villa but let's see that they'll those two have have to play each other so there's a good chance for legia or zrinski to make a few more points fiorentina as i said need to get going they have now two draws against genk and against Fer Fer ferenc varos uh yes ferenc varos and genk are playing each other so there's a chance for fiorentina to get back into it Pauk, as i said looks very good also frankfurt i think the other two Frankfurt is not great at the moment, but I think it should be enough for them to go through. And then Fenerbahce and Nordjylland, on the back of the seventh and one, you would uh, favor those two to move on. Uh, as for the overall favorites, it's Aston Villa and Fiorentina. Uh, big gap between Aston Villa and Fiorentina, although both of them have not been convincing. Frankfurt losing a spot. Uh, Lille now currently in third, but you know there can be some uh, teams floating in from the Europa League as well, which could make it a, probably a little bit more interesting. Uh, the upcoming games, we already talked, talked a little, little bit about Lille against Slovan. I think that could uh, already have a good um, uh, we, we, we could get a good, good feeling how it's happening. Dinamo Zagreb with Victoria Pilsen. I think that's a really interesting one overall. Uh, and then uh, in the the other ones with Adzet against Aston Villa. Uh, that's pretty pretty big in the context of this group as, as well as Zrinski and Legia. Uh, and then yeah, Fiorentina against Chucha uh, whereas Gang have to play Ferenc Varos. And let's see what power can get at Aberdeen. So yeah, did not take as long as the other videos but i want to get this in as well let me know what you think about uh how the conference league might be going give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more i'll talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye